So I really love cooking, and the reason I love cooking is probably because of activity networks, I think. It's really mathematical. Uh, let's look at what I mean by that. So let's say we're going to do that. We're going to cook a cake, right? So the first thing I do when I cook a cake is I put on my apron. That's it. Okay, the next thing I need to do when I cook a cake is I get a pot, and I'm oh, sorry, a bowl, and in the bowl I put uh, two ingredients. You, there's this thing called creaming butter and sugar. So you put your butter and your sugar in, and essentially you just mix it. We'll just call it mixing it. Okay, now while that's happening, so I put it in my machine, I hit mix, and it's mixing, 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 mixing. I'm thinking, because I like to like move fast, right? And so the other thing I need to do is make sure that I turn the oven on, because an oven needs to preheat. So I'll just put that over like here somewhere, and I preheat my oven. Okay, and you can see that once my apron's on, I can start the butter and sugar mixing, and I can turn on the oven, and they don't really depend on each other, right? Like, I can turn on the oven before I do that, or I can um, put... I can do it the other way. doesn't matter. Okay, uh, now the other thing I need to do, while the butter and sugar are mixing, and while the oven's heating, I can get my eggs out of the fridge, and I can beat my eggs. Now it's important you beat your eggs in a separate bowl, otherwise you're putting like whole eggs into this mixture, which would be bad. Okay, so um, once the eggs are beaten, I can put them into that mixture. Okay, and so you can see beating my eggs by hand, mixing in the machine, and we meet here. Now, that means that in my bowl now, I have butter, sugar, and beaten eggs, and they're mixed together. Now, once and only once you've put together what's called your wet ingredients, do you add your dry ingredients, your flour. And we just dump our flour in there, and we mix it. We, don't, we just fold it in. We don't want to mix it too much, because otherwise that creates gluten. Don't worry about it. It's a cooking thing. Okay, next up, um, once the flour's added in there, there's going to be some extra things, vanilla essence or something, but once that stuff is in there, uh, we need to put it into some lined baking tins, right? Because a cake cooks in a tin. Where's my tin? I didn't line. If you don't line your tin and you pour your batter straight in there, it's going to stick. That's bad. So I need to line my tins. Now, I could have done that at any time that this was happening. Line baking tins. Okay, and it's important that I line my baking tins at some point in this process while all this other stuff's happening, but it needs to happen because once that happens, I can pour, pour into tins. Not really happy with putting that in reverse. Hang on a second. Okay, so I can pour it into the tins. Now, once I've poured it into the tins, I just take the tins, I put it in the oven, which is preheated by now. My oven does a little ding when it's preheated. It's at 180 degrees. And then I bake my cake. And then, of course, I eat the cake. So, this is what is happening in my head when I cook, I just, I get really excited about this. All right, so I feel like I'm on a cooking show, you know. You do this, do that, do this, put these together. All right, now I need to make sure I have this done before I do this. Okay, so in mathematical terms, uh, we need some sort of, uh, a few definitions here. Precedence is the big word here. It's an activity that needs to happen before another one. So, for instance, putting on my apron has precedence over all of the other activities. I need to put on my apron before I can do anything else. Now you might be thinking, wait, you don't have to put on your oven to preheat the oven, uh, put on your apron to preheat the oven. I do because I don't feel like I'm cooking until my apron's on. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, butter, sugar, mixing the butter and the sugar and beating the eggs both have precedence over adding the flour. 
Adding the flour has precedence over pouring into tins, and so does lining the baking tins. That also has precedence over pouring into the tins. All of those things have precedence over baking the cake, and all of those things have precedence over eating. And that leads us to something called an immediate predecessor. And that happens just before an activity. So each of these is an activity. Apron is an immediate predecessor to butter sugar and mixture. But a butter sugar mix. Apron is a predecessor to flour, but it is not an immediate predecessor. Butter sugar mix and beat eggs are both immediate predecessors to flour. Pour into tins has two immediate predecessors, flour and line baking tins. All right, so that's what we mean by an immediate predecessor. Now, you can imagine in a much more complicated dish, say in like a MasterChef recipe, this network's going to get really crazy, right? And we could actually interpret this in a table. So I'm just going to uh, change all of my apron, butter sugar, da da da. I'm going to change these to letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All right, that was fast. Now I'm going to take a, create a table called a precedence table. All right, let's do it. So here's my uh, precedence table. Now let's put in all of our activities. Activity A Does, it, does anything have to happen before A happens? No, A is the first thing to happen. So A has no immediate predecessors. Just put a little dash there. All right, let's look at activity B. Does anything have to happen before B happens? Yes, A has to happen. A is B's immediate predecessor. Okay, what about C? Yes, A has to happen. So A is that one, and D, uh, yes, A is the immediate predecessor there, and E, yes, A is the immediate predecessor there. So we can see that uh, A is the immediate predecessor to a lot of things. Okay, uh, what about F? What needs to happen immediately before F? F has two immediate predecessors. B and C have to happen before F can happen. So we just write B, comma, C. We have two immediate predecessors. Um, what about G? Okay, it looks like G has two immediate predecessors. F has to happen, and so does D. Just write those in alphabetical order, just because D and F. Okay, um, what about uh, H? Okay, H has, I'll just make some space here. H has two immediate predecessors. Uh, we have to do E before we can do H. We have to do G before we have to do H. So E and uh, G. And what about uh, I? Well, the only thing we have to do before I is H. All right, so there is our uh, precedence table. Uh, this is our activity network, a nice way to summarize what's happening there. And so, of course, anything that we do forwards, we can do backwards. So if from a network you can draw a precedence table, you can take a precedence table and draw a network. So this is different to the precedence table, changed if you miss the jump. Um, I'm going to draw this activity network. Now, the thing to remember, the thing that makes your life easy, is to start at the finish. Okay, so what do I mean by start at the finish? Well, let's look at these activities and these immediate predecessors. You can see that A, something has to, A has to happen before B can happen. A has to happen before C can happen, and A has to happen before D can happen. B has to happen before E, C has to happen before F, D has to happen before G, and G, E, F, and G have to happen before H. But H is not an immediate predecessor of anything, which means that H must be the last thing in our network, the last activity. Okay. Now, what needs to happen before H? Well, E, F, and G are immediate predecessors of H, which means that they all have to happen before H happens. Uh, e, F, and G are immediate predecessors of H. Okay, let's look at G. G has an immediate predecessor of D. So D has to happen before G. What about F? F has an immediate predecessor of C. 
Now, I might have to like change this up. I'm just working on the fly here. Um, now, E has an immediate predecessor of B. Okay, and then D has an immediate predecessor of A. But wait a minute. C has an immediate predecessor of A. Uh, okay, but I've written A here. All right, okay. So I'll change my C to go here a little bit, like that. So now um, A is an immediate predecessor of D and C. Okay, and uh, oh, oh, okay, this was B. B has an immediate predecessor of A as well, right? So A has to happen before B can happen. Okay, so, and A has no immediate predecessors. So, first A happens, and then B, C, and D happen, and then from B, C, and D, E, F, and G can happen, and then from E, F, and G, we finish off by doing H. So, if you start at the finish and work your way back, shouldn't have too much problem. You can sort of start at the front, but I find it easier to work that way. Of course, I don't really love how that network looks. I think it would look better if I just tidy it up a bit so the lines are straight and they're kind of leading to the right place. Okay, uh, that is activity networks. We've looked at precedence tables. We've worked one way, we've worked the other way. That's a pretty good go.